talking about exponential notation. So exponential notation is used to express repeated factors and can be used to write very large or very small numbers. Um, let's take a look at the number 1 billion. In this case, we're trying to see how many times is the base 10 used as a factor. So we can see in order to get a billion, I have to take 10 times 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 10. So what we get is that the base 10 is used as a factor 9 times. And that 9 is our exponent because it shows that we took the number 10 and multiplied it by itself 9 times. So one thing to remember about exponential notation, it's really a method of rewriting numbers. We're not doing anything computationally, really, um, just shortening some values. Now, exponential notation has its place when related to prime factorization. But before we get to prime factorization, what I want to do is talk about some divisibility rules for prime numbers, because it is kind of important. Um, I'm only focusing on prime numbers, because that's really how it relates to prime factorization. Eh? Eh? Um, and so let's go over a couple. First, we have 2. If the last digit is even, then I know it's divisible by 2. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, so if we take the number 21 and add the digits together, 2 plus 1, that equals 3, and I know 3 is divisible by 3, so 21 is divisible by 3. A uh, number is divisible by 5 if the last digit is 0 or 5, and then when we get to 7, 7 is kind of confusing. Um, there are a lot of steps to it, but let's take a number, let's use the number 21. I'm going to take the last digit, which is 1, and then I'm going to double it to get the number 2. Then I'm going to subtract that number 2 from the number formed by the remaining digits. So the remaining digit from 21, you can see, is the number 2. I'm going to subtract this 2 from that remaining digit 2, and it's going to give me a result of 0. Because it gives a result of 0, then the original number is divisible by 7. Um, I can also repeat this for larger numbers. Now this rule also exists for other, uh, rules also exist for other numbers. Um, divisibility rules exist for, for 4, for 6, for 8. You can go ahead and look those up and find those out. But right now I just want to focus on prime numbers. So back to the idea of prime factorization. Prime factorization is a way I can take a number and break it down into its, again, prime factors. So, let's take, for example, number 81. Now, I'm going to use a factor tree. And I know that 81 is divisible by 9, which leaves me 9 times 9, but I'm going to break it down into its prime factors here. And so I know each 9 can be broken down, and then I'm left with 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, using exponential notation, I can write that as 3 to the 4th. Now let's take a look at the number 1,470. It's a larger number. It ends in 0, so I know it's divisible by 10 or 5. But in this case, since I'm focusing on prime numbers, I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 5, and that leaves me with 294. Now I know 294 is even, so I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 2, and that leaves me with 147. 147. Huh. Well, it's not even, but if I take 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12, so I know it's divisible by 3, and that leaves me with 49. Now here I'm home free because I know 49 is a square number divisible by 7. So I've now broken it down into its prime factors. So the prime factorization of 1,470 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 squared. And that is how you write the prime factorization of a number. Now here's one I want you to try on your own. Find the prime factorization of 4,802. Go ahead. Pause the video if you like. 
um, do it your own on your own, and you'll see the answer shortly. That'll be all for today.